Welcome back to another episode on the Expand Your Awareness 2.0 podcast. My name is Aaron Dowdy. I'm with my good friends, Victor Odo and Patty Papa. Hey, Hello. thank Hello. you guys for joining. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to do this episode with you guys because um, what I thought we would do is kind of, we, I know there's a lot of people that have listened to my podcast that love it when I talk about plant medicine, but I don't do it all that often. And uh, many of you know Victor Odo. Victor Odo's made a lot of YouTube videos, my best friend, and then Patty Papa, his wife. <laughs> she's amazing when it comes to anything to do with uh, your connection to plants. You've been on the podcast before as mm -hmm, well. Yeah. Um, her podcast episode is actually very popular. It's such a niche thing, but it was very popular for what it is. And oh, she really? talked about, yeah, cool. um, I had so many people reach out to me. It was specifically on uh, dieting with plants. And that's something that you do. I remember when you first did your rose diet uh -huh. and you've done many other, well, you have one coming up, don't you? Yeah, I do. Which one is it? Mapacho. Mapacho. So for those of you that don't know, Mapacho is the tobacco spirit. Yeah, it's the, it's jungle tobacco specifically. So there's, it's uh, nicotina rustica. You looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah, I'm really That's excited. That's really cool. So for those of you that don't know, a dieta, do you want to explain kind of what a dieta is? Um, yeah, I can do that. So a dieta is, um, the purpose of it is just to connect with a plant spirit and um, essentially gain a plant ally. So every time I do a plant diet, um, I gain a new ally. Yeah. But that, do that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get an ally without that, mm -hmm. but um, it just establishes a more deep connection. And I can tell the difference between if I'm working with lavender, which I haven't dieted, mm -hmm. over if I'm working with rose or sage right. or ajo sacho. Yeah. Or, you know, and those are plants that I have dieted and I can tell the difference between bringing that spirit in mm -hmm. and versus a plant that I haven't dieted. I think it's really cool. Um, it, 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 what she does as well is she, there's a certain type of diet where you're eating very non-stimulating mm -hmm. foods, almost no seasoning. Yeah. And what that does is that helps you more purely connect when you're doing the tea. So if you were doing rose, you might do rose tea uh -huh. and then you might also have that of like a rose essential oil that you use yeah. you won't use any other essential oils no nope. just rose oil or tea or rose water yeah. um i also had rose body wash rose is a really easy plant to diet because yeah. there's so she's so readily available mm -hmm. in various different ways and shampoos and yeah yeah it was really interesting because in my um i did a women's retreat last october and mm -hmm. the house that we stayed at, there was rose water body wash and shampoo and conditioner in every bathroom. Oh, wow. And they all thought that I had put it in there. <laughs> I would have bought that. But I was like, I, I didn't do it. that. She just wanted to show wow, up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's cool. I remember when Patty was first dieting uh, rose, she would she talked to, about Rose as if it was a person. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, Rose told me this. Rose told me yeah. that. Rose came to Victor. <laughs> yeah. So it was funny because then she, they can teach you. They're teachers. So yeah. they can teach you things. So Rose has a common theme of teaching people unconditional love mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. And also loving your shadow. And yeah. there's so many different aspects. And really... Femininity. Mm -hmm, yeah. Essentially, the plants are all teachers. Yeah. And they all give you what you need and what you need to work on so I mean we could go into a lot of details oh, yeah. on all this it's a but... perfect segue though because mm -hmm. those the plants are the teachers and mm -hmm. then we have ayahuasca yeah and ayahuasca is a teacher as well oh yeah the, the yes. ayahuasca <laughs> spirit um I know that when I first did ayahuasca I was so closed off to it I remember <laughs> it was Victor and I we were um just started becoming like BFFs and stuff <laughs> BFFs BFFs Yay! and then um <laughs> what happened we got we got invited to go to Costa Rica to this yeah. life transformation spa and um I was just gonna go you know all, all I had to do was go and make videos so I I didn't plan on actually taking ayahuasca you were like oh I'm gonna do it and then I was like okay so then when we got there I ended up doing it uh, all four nights. It was a week long life transformation spa. The first four nights are all ayahuasca ceremonies, a uh, different theme each night. One night was like a feminine night, one night was a, a masculine night, and there are different themes. Um, but every night it was, I was learning things. I was learning things about myself. There were common themes that came up for me, and uh, I found it to be extraordinarily powerful. So much so that I've done it three years in a row, four times each year. Mm. So I've done it. A, uh, a total of 12 times now and it's always a really good re for me it's a really good reset also just from 
as busy as I am in my natural life mm -hmm. to keep my ego in check. Because yeah. as more and more success has come, as more and more uh, my life has changed in many ways, I, I start to develop this ego that like, oh, I need to do this. I need to have willpower. I need to do this. And then Mother Ayahuasca always has a way of showing me where I'm out of balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what, is, what, are, what was your guys' initial, maybe talk about your initial experiences on Aya when you first did it or... Sure, sure. The one thing I wanted to point out, sort of in alignment with what you were saying mm -hmm. about, like, that's like, we are just, me and Aaron were discussing. I asked him, like, so what's this podcast going to be about? And he's like, oh, we'll just let it flow, man. <laughs> just, you know, basic lessons from the ayahuasca. And I was like, okay, cool. And then so what, the one thing that did pop in my head was uh, humility. It reminds me of something yeah. our friend Rayma or another YouTuber said to me before I did it. I talked to him on the phone or on a Skype thing. And he's oh, like, yeah. oh, Mother Ayahuasca, that's the queen. Mm -hmm. He said, she's going to take your ego and make it this big. And he kind of like squeezed his hands together <laughs> and like, you know, put his fingers together. And I was like, oh, okay, that should be interesting. But that's like the main thing I get out of it too. And that's why I've chosen to, to, to use it regularly as well because it really does – keep your ego in check. It, sh yeah. it reveals to you where you're acting out of ego. And we're spiritual people, so we don't like to think that we're ever egoic, but we really are. Yeah. And you really see where you actually stand when you take the medicine. And not only is it helpful to be aware of that because then you can, you can modify your behavior, but just being less driven from the ego makes you more I'm just more happy more in more in unity with like the earth yeah. and, and and life itself your relationships all things from life improve dramatically mm -hmm. when you can become more aware of your shadow or the ego and that's yeah. the main thing that ayahuasca shows me nearly every time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes in very bo fairly bold ways so the the way it kind of happened is um victor victor and i went to uh costa rica we came back, and then did you immediately tell Patty, told, told, told you about it, right? Yeah, he, he didn't even leave the Rhythmia before. He, told, he was, like, telling me, like, oh, you got to you – Yeah, you were, call, you were calling her every night. I remember After that. night three, I called her. I was like, honey, we're going to send you here. <laughs> yeah. you got to have this happen to you, too. <laughs> yeah. And then what were you thinking? I was like, sign me up. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was like really excited. Um, but prior to that, just to give a little context as well, you guys have um, occasionally done something like psilocybin mushrooms every now and then or yeah, something. Me like more that. so than her. You've done it a few times yeah. at that point. Yeah, I mean, it had been many years for mm. me be before I, like a after taking psilocybin mushrooms and drinking ayahuasca, it was a good like 10 years. Yeah. Or more, actually, because, I, I mean, I think. Not that long, but. Yeah. Okay, maybe. I think so. Maybe. Either way. It was a long time, anyway. And it, if I had taken psilocybin mushrooms, it wasn't a very, like, right. profound experience because yeah. I don't remember it. Um, so, yeah, it, it had been a minute since I had worked with any psychedelic plants or mm -hmm. otherwise what do you find your lessons or insights normally are it's it varies um my journey with the medicine is a lot different than most people yeah. especially like his but um and just to give it clarity patty is more of a, of a medicine woman in many ways you're very passionate about doing the medicine yeah and you do it more often than both victor or i so it's kind of like your path in a way just to give people so maybe you work with it the way you do because you're also there many times right. as a helper. Yeah. You know. Well, and that's that's true. So a lot of times um, my my journeys with the medicine will be really just about me holding space and coming into my power mm -hmm. um, as a medicine woman and as a space holder. Um, but there's so, I mean, yeah. so many lessons yeah. always, you know. Um, a lot of what she works with me on is... Um, being gentle with myself mm -hmm. um the last few times have been um really about like letting go of like compulsive thoughts mm -hmm. and um like addictive thoughts because we do we get addicted to to the thought processes yeah. of just like always at, like being in our head we are used to like okay i've got to do this i've got to do that i've got to do this and ayahuasca sort of brings that in and says that can wait yeah you need to work on you you need to work on loving yourself more. You need to work on being gentle with yourself more. Yeah. You know, um, she showed me a lot of um, really beautiful things about um, being a parent. Yeah. And um, there's, I mean, there's so many lessons. The list 
is really endless because I'm, I'm always learning, yeah. you know, even if it's just how to be in ceremony and, and what it means to be in ceremony. Let's, let's give uh, beautifully set. And um, yeah, there's many different facets of it. Yeah. Let's explain a little bit about the set and setting of somebody that maybe hasn't done Aya before that's thinking of doing it. Sure. Because there's a similarity yeah. when it comes to the way, you know, even though we've done it in high-end ritzy places, we've done it not so much. Um, so there's always a central theme. There's a couple common themes. So one of it is um, the shaman, mm -hmm. obviously. So the shaman are the ones that are leading. What are the shaman? What are the main things the shaman do? Is they, they hold space. Yeah, they, they hold the space. They, they um, open the portal for the ayahuasca energies to come into the space. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're basically there to just listen to what the medicine tells them. Yeah. So I don't know if that's clear. I feel like they essentially help guide the experience. They yeah. read the group as yep. a whole, and then they have all these different tools and different things they do as a way of sort of influencing the energy to facilitate yeah. a, an optimal experience for everyone. Yeah. That's the way I perceive it. Yeah. Yes. And essentially also they're there to hold the space and um, keep people safe. Yeah. You know, because... Um, you never know what, what the collective group is working with. And, yep. um, you know, yeah. they're there to, to create a safe container for people to be able to have their full process and release what needs to be released. And sometimes yeah. that's really heavy and sometimes it's not. Yep. Um, but that they're essentially there to hold the space and, and create safety in, and in keep the, the space. space clean. Mm -hmm. a, lot yep, of people cleaning. Don't, a lot of people don't know as well that the, the shaman will take the medicine with you. Some mm -hmm. people, I remember when I first did it, I was like, wait, they're doing it too? Right, yeah. <laughs> How are they going to look over me? <laughs> and they're doing it, and they're literally in the same world. They're in the same vibration. Yeah. So they can look at you, and their tools would be like singing. Some of them have instruments. They sing, and they're doing, what are they called? Ikarus? Ikarus, yeah. Ikarus, and mm -hmm. they're doing these beautiful songs that sometimes aren't so beautiful in the moment because they're mm -hmm. bringing up this stuff that's been deeply inside of your, your body and your consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, they mm -hmm. have different instruments. They have uh, um, um, like copal. Yeah. yeah, copal, Florida sage, water. Florida water, different oils. Um, it really, it, it depends um, on their training, mm -hmm. the tools that they use. So um, one of my teachers is a master herbalist, so she works with a lot of different um, oils and, um, and different plants, yeah. you know, to help assist. And um, um, uh, my other teacher works with, I forget what it's called, Shindoyu or something like that, but it's it's mm. for clearing. It's for cleaning. Okay. Yeah. Um. Essentially, they're all there to like move energy and to clear and clean. Yeah. And and just to give um clarity to where well, kind of like with a lot of the teachings that I have when I talk about ayahuasca and the calibrations of chart, like the the levels of vibration, Mother Ayahuasca resonates at a very high frequency, and. The, the weird thing is that when people think of Aya, it's like, well, it sometimes can bring up stuff. It brings up subconscious things that feel dark. But the reason that is, is because it's such a high vibration that it's cleaning. It's bringing all these things up to the surface to be let go of. Mm -hmm. So um, ayahuasca on that scale of consciousness, when they muscle test it, actually it, it calibrates very high. It's mm -hmm. one of the, it's up there. It's, it's more than mushrooms. It's between like five and 600, which is love. But it seems paradoxical to some people because it's like, well, you know, it, what, what people will experience when they do Aya, the dark stuff, is stuff that's already inside mm -hmm. that wants to come out. Right. It's just a yeah. purging, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it seems like the medicine, and this is what the way the shamans that we work with have explained it to me. It's like, it, it gives you an expanded state of awareness, which, which basically implies it will temporarily raise your vibration. Yeah. And then once your vibration gets to like an abnormal height temporarily, all the stuff within you that yeah. is not able to survive in that energetic climate, it, it comes up, it comes out to the surface. Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. that's why it's a purge. Mm -hmm. It's helping yeah. you adjust to the high frequencies, which is exactly. very valuable. Yeah, I want to share a little bit about my experience and I'd love for you guys to share maybe one or two experiences you had of like- <laughs> For sure. But my, mine in general is kind of on that thread. Um, I've, I've shared it before in my podcast and stuff, but I had an experience that one of the first times I was deep on the medicine is when we were in Costa Rica. Um, it was the, the, it, you do it four nights in a row. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as you guys know. But, um, the second night, Victor and I, we, it was just a year that Victor and I went 
Um, this is like two years ago, three years ago. Is this the first time you guys went or the second? I think this is actually the first night. This first was the first, first time. time. Yeah. We, we normally win every like November. So uh, I go in, go into Costa Rica. It's amazing. There's this beautiful life transformation spa, having a great time. Then the first night I go, um, and it was, it was very settled. And the first night's normally like an introductory night anyways. They normally don't, it's not real deep on the medicine. It's like, it's very normally a little more chill. The second night was the masculine night. And you go in at like five or six at night, just to kind of paint a picture here for people. You go in at like five or six at night. And then normally ceremony would be from like seven to about one in the morning. And there'll be two times that the medicine is offered. And it's this, it's like this um, liquid that you drink out of a shot glass and you take it. And then uh, at about seven and they open up the portal, they open up ceremony and they'll serve rape, hape, which is like tobacco and um, and generally that's done before before yeah, yes. before they before they serve the medicine yes yeah yeah and um then uh where was i going with this so your story your story yeah so okay so on tuesday night victor and i were there and we were kind of you know in separate spots or whatever but we took like i think i took like four or five sh like shots that night like you know they they off they opened it up we took one a couple hours later we they all anytime they offered victor and i were like the first ones up there and then by like the last, by, by like 11 o'clock, we just kind of got bored because sometimes the medicine will hit you and sometimes it'll kind of hold itself back, but you always get what you need. Mm -hmm. um, but at like 11 o'clock at night, Victor and I went outside and you're not supposed to talk. Like you're not, it, it's very encouraged to just go within your process, you know. Victor and I though had one of the most high vibe conversations. We really connected with each yeah. other deep because we realized that back in 2012, we went through like the same exact kind of spiritual awakening process of, <laughs> of this stuff. And it was super funny. We were like joking around. I, I laughed more that night than I laughed the whole year. Yeah. And it was super high vibe. So then the third night we go and it's feminine night with, um, with actually the two shaman that we're going to be announcing something with a little bit later. Um, and it was a feminine night. We go in and we both kind of got a little cocky. <laughs> yes. We got a little, we're like, four, four of these cups didn't do anything. Shh, we're good. We just went in, took the, uh, they opened up ceremony at seven. We just pump it down. We're like, we're good. We go lay back down in the bed. And then about an hour and a half, or like not even an hour, for me, like 35, 40 minutes goes by. And all of a sudden, I just start feeling this energy inside of me. And some people might be more visual. Some people might just feel energy. Some people might hear and be auditory. Everyone has their own way of, of going through it. I got this feeling inside of my heart that was so much unconditional love that it was freaking me the fuck out. <laughs> I was getting freaked out. Like it was that much love inside of my heart. And um, it, was, it was kind of scaring me a little bit. It's like, whoa, this is like so much unconditional love and power. I don't know what to do with it. And then the message I got is this is over the course of like the next two hours I was feeling it. Um, and I remember they called for a second cup. Victor just got up and went over. And you'll, you'll probably, I'm going to relay this on to you because yeah, I know yeah. you have a whole uh, thing about it this same night. It was very powerful. Um, I'm like, how the hell is he even getting up to go get another one? Mm -hmm. I was just feeling it so strongly. And then um, I got a message and the message I got from ayahuasca or mother ayahuasca was, um, you know, that scale, you know, there's always a scale. I talk about my YouTube videos. I say on a scale of one to 10 before my spiritual awakening, 2012, I felt like a three out of 10. And then after my spiritual awakening, I learned meditation. I started to feel like a seven or eight out of 10. And I always use that scale. And the message I got was, Hey buddy, you know, that scale of one to 10 that you already sh always share and how you're at a seven or eight out of 10. Here's a 15 out of 10. There's still <laughs> more to go. <laughs> like this, this, like it gave me a taste of something beyond what I, you know, my ego probably thought, Oh, I'm like, I feel a seven or eight out of 10. I feel, I feel like almost there. really, really high vibe. And, it, <laughs> and then the other message I got was that in the future, we have the potential to be feeling that 15 out of 10 will eventually be like what we feel on a daily basis it is the potential that we have as like human, as a human race, Going like forward. as, as, um, evolution, as we evolve consciously with our consciousness. So I got the vibe that that's the potential that we have. And, um, but, and then it made, I used to always be so impatient. I was like, why doesn't it happen quicker? Why can't we ascend quicker? You know, and Victor, I'm sure was the same way back in 2012. But the reason being is like, dude, it freaks you the fuck out. Just like you're freaking out and you're like, you're trying to control. The other main lesson from that night was let go, let go, stop trying to control, let go. And as I let go, I was able to feel more of these waves come through. Um, I was able to realize also the rigidity of my ego. That was right when I was going full time on YouTube and I started making, I was making daily videos on YouTube for almost a year at that point mm -hmm. for like eight or nine months at that point. And I started to like really 
value my own willpower and working really hard. And I was being shown that like, you don't need to always work so hard. You can allow things, the universe to work with you. You can allow things to happen. You can enjoy your life more. And I realized I wasn't really enjoying my life because I was always worried about the next YouTube video and, and this and that and stats and all of this stuff. So it was, it was one of the most profound experiences I've had. And it, it, anytime now I go into an ayahuasca experience, I always, I'll write down on a piece of paper sometimes, just let go, yeah. just let go. Because it'll, if you start to freak out and you just remember to let go, it always gets easier from there for me at least. It's like, let go, let go, you know? Uh, but that's just me because I also have like a control thing in my life. It's always a, a balance for me to learn control mm -hmm. because I've got become successful from kind of nothing. So it's like, I value my control. I value my willpower. But Mother Ayahuasca is always there to show me, hey, and she'll show us in many different ways. Sometimes it's visually, sometimes it's metaphors. Um, I know that recently as well, um, I used to tell myself a story. I'm not a very visual person on Ayahuasca. And then eventually this last time I went, when we did Aya, we all did Aya together, um, my goal was to let go of that belief. I realized it was just a limiting belief. And then I became more visual. Hmm. So it's like, it'll show you these shadow aspects of you. But just to kind of bring it back down to the second night, um, or the third night, the third night, the feminine night, I then see Victor. So that was my night. I see Victor get up to go get the second cup. And I'm thinking, oh, man. <laughs> so what happened from there? Yeah, so it was funny because because me and Aaron went in so cocky, I didn't even wait for them to call the second cup. I went up there by myself on my own terms. And I, I talked to the shaman that what you'll talk about later. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not really feeling it. Can I, can I have another cup? And she looked at me with this like super serious look. And she was, just shook her head. No. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So I, w I went back to my seat, like whatever, you know, and I started journaling and I, yeah. I was like on my shoulder journaling. And then they called the second cup. And I literally like, like, you know, those people like jump up off their back, yep, I their feet. It. I didn't do that, but it was like that yeah. in a real cocky way. Like I need to get this in me. I'm not feeling it. I, I hopped up. And I remember, I wish I would have noticed this, but I noticed not many people were getting up for the second cup. Yeah. And I remember looking over, giving you like a double take. I know, over. you're like, why isn't he getting up? And you, you, and you looked, we locked eyes and you were just like, <laughs> you just looked at me like, nope, sorry, bro. I'm not getting up. I remember up. that. I was like. <laughs> I remember wondering like, why does he have a stomach ache? But I was so caught up in my ego. And, and as Aaron said, we had so many cups the night before and felt nothing. I thought I need to like get a few in me. I'm not going to have an experience. Yeah. And then like I, I drank the second cup, went back to my, went back to my seat or my, my little bed and I was journaling and all of a sudden I feel this like this like sick like you know that that sick sense you get when like yeah. you w become aware of something almost like when you're in your room and you have that fear there's like a presence there just that that sick sense it was like that I felt finally for the first time the presence of the extremely powerful mother ayahuasca in my belly and all of a sudden I was just like oh shit and I <laughs> laid back down I, I've been I've had heart like intense like a dog experienced before and I knew this is what was happening yeah so I just laid down and all of a sudden I was like whoa <laughs> she just had her way with me and and came in so strong and so powerful so powerfully and as Aaron said I realized like the key if there is one mm -hmm. is to let go because it's such a powerful experience and she's just such a powerful being um that 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 fighting her which we've seen people do can create a very challenging experience yeah. but then that's just your own resistance manifest that's all that is yeah um and i found that once you let go even though sometimes the things she shows you are initially difficult to like look at and process it's also valuable yeah like one of the things that came to me that night i think was like it showed me like almost like a visual of myself in my bathroom that at the house we live at sort of stomping around in like a very irritated sort of frustrated way and i I saw my son sort of curled up by the bathtub looking at me having experienced my like cocky like uh, irritable energy and he had this look on his face that I, was, I still cannot get out of my mind of just I was able to see how uh, my unconscious parenting was affecting my children and it was such a uh, an image I still again it's in my mind but it was like it was enough to where I went home I've never once like acted in that way towards any of my kids since then. It was so, so powerful. So yeah. just that one little gem in itself was like life changing as a, as a parent, as a father. Yeah. And that, that night in particular was filled with like, I count like dozens of gems, life changing experiences, varying of all different ways of yeah. information coming in. But it was like, it was so powerful, so humbling and so like permanently transformative. It, it wasn't like a dream where you come out of it and it's like, yeah. Oh, what, what happened? 
I, I, I can recall the entire journey. I, I told I told you both all about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was my third night. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing you afterwards. I, I was all because after it, it wore off. I mean, I only had one cup that night, but it was still intense. But yeah. hours later, I like I'm all sp spritzy and I like pump up and I'm like, hey Vic, how you doing? And yeah. I'm like a little fucking talker, you know. And then you were just like. Huh? Like, <laughs> he was yeah. still in his element. He's like, I think I'm going to stay here for a couple more hours. Like, even after everyone was going back to their rooms. Yeah. He's like, I might just, I think maybe you called Patty or something. Eventually, yeah. I made my way back to the room. Somehow, yeah. I found it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, powerful experience. Powerful, that yeah. Was, that was one of the most powerful nights of my life as well. Yeah. Um, and then what about you, Patty? I know you have, she's, you've had many journeys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, one of the ones I'm going to share um, it was, it, it's very important, like the letting go. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I drank ayahuasca once and then, um, <clears throat> I decided I needed to go to Peru. So I went to Peru and, um, we were supposed to drink medicine a few nights, but I ended up only drinking twice while I was there. But the first night was a bust. Um, I didn't really have much of an experience. The the second night, which was my third ayahuasca experience, um, the medicine was so strong for me. I had never experienced anything like that. Yeah. And so I thought, I immediately felt inc extremely afraid. I thought, you're going to die here. You're going to die. Yeah. You're going to die. The shaman purposely gave you too much medicine. He's going to rape you and then you're going to die. Yeah. And that was like how my thought was, my, my head was going. Finally... I like had this realization of like, okay, one of two things is going to happen. One, you're going to die and then you're dead. What are yeah. you going to do? You're yeah. dead. Like, sorry, Vic. I had to go to Peru to die, I guess. Yeah. Or two, you're going to wake up in four hours. And when I had that realization, I just was like, okay. And I just laid down and I just shot. I blasted off into the cosmos. I was like, seeing all kinds of crazy shapes and colors and and um i got this very strong sense of it's time now now the first my first two ceremonies were i was incredibly nauseated i didn't have like a really intense experience just really intense nausea and i was like convinced like i'm not going to purge on ayahuasca she's not going to let me purge whatever mm -hmm. And I kept begging her. I was begging her, please let me purge. Please let me purge. Because I yeah. just felt so uncomfortable. And she kept saying, it's not time yet. It's wow. not time yet. Yeah. And then I got this very loud, like, it's time now. And I just had the most epic purge uh, up to, to date. Wow. Uh, of just, it was like this loud, crazy purge. And... Um, and no one else was purging at the time, and it was quiet in the space, too. And so <laughs> I felt <laughs> really self-conscious about that. But um, the message that I got was after <clears throat> my purge, I realized that the things that I purged in that moment, they were still serving me up until that point, which is why it wasn't time to purge. I was still, mm. like, utilizing and working with all the things because they were creating lessons in my life so what would be an example of that be um i'm just trying to get a feel for it just like so it's more of certain habits or certain yeah yeah okay. exactly it was just certain habits and things that i was doing and okay. um lessons were were being learned i see i see and so if lessons. she would have had me purge and i would have released premature. that yeah it would have yeah. premature yeah so i had a really big understanding of of the importance one of letting go yeah, and just allowing the medicine to have her process because you can't control it anyway. Yeah, She's like, my teacher says, um, it's like 80, 20%, right? You have your intention and she'll take it into consideration, but she has her own agenda. Yeah. And so is 80 to 20 to who? To her, <laughs> to her, 80, 80, Yay. 20 percent your, your intention. But it is important to have an intention. It and is. she does. She she <laughs> always honors my intention, but it's never how I expect it to yeah. be. So whatever the intention is, whether it's to um, focus on my like control issues, she she said to me more than once, like, it's a choice. That's a choice. You make a choice to be controlling. Mm -hmm. You have the choice yeah. to not be controlling. If you don't like doing that and you don't like being that way, 
you are choosing to be that way so you can choose not to be that way. Yeah. And for me, I'm thinking, well, can I just purge that out, you know, right, and yeah. like just let that go? Like, isn't that, isn't that enough? Um, so it's a powerful insight though, because it, it sometimes I know even for myself, it's kind of a part mm-hmm. of my identity. Like I control things in my life. Mm-hmm. Even my, I've heard my a big turning point for me was one time when I realized that uh, my, people in my family were like arguing and my brother was like, there Aaron goes, getting himself involved, trying to control it and make it better. You uh-huh. know, it's like part of it. And it's realizing that that's kind of, I saw myself as part of my identity mm-hmm. in a way. So just realizing it's a choice. It's like, oh, there's this new potential, this new possibility. Mm-hmm. I don't have to keep choosing that. Yeah. So that in of itself could be very powerful. Yeah. I feel, I feel like the learning to navigate the ayahuasca experience in general, you know, going with the flow, letting go, et cetera, looking at yourself. It's almost like a metaphor for life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're like living at a time now where there's spiritual awakening happening yeah. and life is always showing us things about ourselves and, and causing us, you know, presenting us with things that our natural ego tendency is to, to constrict and to control. Yeah. But if you can learn how to like chill and go with the flow in ayahuasca, it's like really bleeds into life nicely, I find. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And in life, generally, I'm pretty go with the flow, but there are certain aspects where I am very controlling and I, mm-hmm. and yeah. she's made that very, very aware, of, uh, um, not, she made me very aware of where I'm yeah. controlling and it's like, in things that are not really necessary to be controlling in, yeah. you know? So, um, there's, there was that, but, um, there's been a lot of really profound, um, experiences, but one that really is sticking out in this moment was, um, the, I had an attachment to like our journeys with the medicine being the same Mm -hmm. because um he i wouldn't have drank ayahuasca had he not gone to rhythmia yeah you know and um so and really i he brought me to the medicine when in indirectly yeah she calls everybody to her it would have been some other way you know and i get that now but i had a very strong attachment to like okay well i i feel really called to work with this medicine and, and, um, work with the plants and, and, and help bring people to the medicine and to plants. And, and I had such a strong calling and he didn't, he had it, but not in the same way that I did. Like, I don't, I never read books. Like I, that's just, I don't sit and read. That's not something I ever really did. But as soon as I drank the medicine, that was like, all I wanted to do was immerse myself in like the medicine world and shamanism and, and Peruvian medicine and all, all, all types of different things. I I remember you were, she was like running, I'd see her at the gym. She's on the treadmill reading like Carlos Casanata. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Or some like plant medicine book. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. That was new. (laughs) Yeah. But um, the medicine very so gently just said, this journey is your journey and his journey is his journey. And it's okay that they're different. And it's okay that um, it's okay that you want it to be the same, but it's not. And that's something that you have to accept. And I had a whole process about it because it was something that I just held on to so tightly Mm -hmm. because I thought that meant like if I went this direction and he went this direction that we would be separating, but it's really just, we have, we're, you know, on the same path in the same direction. We just have different purposes. Honestly, looking in from the outside of it, it couldn't be better. Like you have that polarity. It would almost be too, like I I come out of a relationship where I was with someone that did the same thing as me. Mm -hmm. And I, there were many ways that that kind of got in the way actually. And that polarity of not one, not being in the world will give the groundedness in some ways to different aspect of life. And then you will give an aspect, a different aspect from being in the plant world. So if anything, that's going to enhance that polarity in that relation. I can see that from the outside looking in. Yeah, it (laughs) it has. And that was the main uh, epiphany I had recently just to touch on briefly was like the the realization that I was doing plant medicine a lot more than most people a a dozen times a year or so, which is crazy. And then it was like this most recent time, I just didn't want to do it, but I, but I just signed up anyway. And she was like, well, why are you here? And I was like, oh, why, why she, she am I here? She meaning ayahuasca. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, why mm-hmm. am I here? And it's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a good reason. And it was, it was, the realization was that you're not really here to become a shaman. 
Patty is. Yes. So she drinks it all the time, and that makes yeah. sense for her. And also, we have a lot of friends that are like shamans, and so I just wouldn't want to go world. to like yeah. hang out with them. Yeah. But it's like you're not. This is a very serious thing to do so frequently. Yeah. So for me, I do it way less now because I don't need to do it as much. It's just more for my own yeah. personal growth. Yeah. Um. So I was surprised to hear. I remember hearing yeah. Victor was like, you know, anytime after they go into ceremony, um. I normally will wait a day or two to talk to you guys because yeah. I know you guys are integrating. Yes. But then Victor called me or something. He's like, hey, you know, let, let me fill you in. And I was like, what? Like, you're, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I'm going to be doing it less. This is Patty's path. And like, you know, and I was like, wow, that's a, it know, felt I never saw that though. coming, you know, yeah. just because I've, I know for the last like year or two, it's been a more consistent, you know, journey for yeah. me to go on to, to. But yeah, it was like what you said though with the polarity. Like once I had that epiphany in, in the ceremony, it really felt like a weight has been lifted. Like I don't wow. have to, yeah. to keep up in this yeah. way that's unnatural for me. And yeah. I felt like a big burden lifted. So yeah. it's, it's even, it's better. And what's, what's wow. really cool is that I felt him having like that process. Wow. Like, as, like he was not in the ceremony space and I like looked over and I thought, where's, where's Victor? And I just could feel Sometimes that he was the ceremony like having happens the process. In the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah no but I just knew that he was like having a process and I knew it was like associated with having something to do with me because yeah. I thought at first I thought is he calling me to him and I was like no he's not I know he's he's not calling me to him so then I just realized like wow. he's just having a process yeah. you know so it's, it's, it's amazing how mother ayahuasca will give us these different lessons yeah you know um and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. And everyone kind of goes. So one thing I want to also plug right now is people have heard our experiences with mother ayahuasca. And this um, is just like, this is like the, the ultra, ultra cliff notes. Yes. Yeah. There's, there, <laughs> and there's so, I mean, we have seen so many people's lives transform from taking plant medicine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, so many stories, just people that, that have released a lot of you know, guilt from childhood, mm -hmm. a lot of sometimes memories will surface up that you can then let go of. I had one memory of when I was, um, when I was like five years old of my dad coming in, like when I would go from my dad's house to my mom's house, I would, my parents were divorced. I went back, I had this memory of every time I'd go into my dad's house, I would then go and there'd be an action figure on the bed. Well, I had this memory in ayahuasca where one day I walked into the room, I was like six or seven years old and there was no action figure on the bed. And that memory was showing me that at a certain point in my past, I decided and saw that and thought that that meant my dad didn't love me anymore. Mm -hmm. Wow. So little, little memories like that, that I just totally was unconscious, not aware of, right. was able to show. Then you don't bring into your daily awareness. Yeah, not, not at all. I was like, what is this? And I saw it and I was like, wow. And I've had other, other experiences like that on mother ayahuasca, but, um, same. Yeah, me one, too. <laughs> one thing that we want to, that we're going to be doing actually is that Victor and I and Patty last year, we went back in November. We're doing something this year, and it's we're gonna be honest with you guys, this is super exciting. We're super excited to even announce this. Yeah. Yes. Um, so if you're listening to this right now, um, then you have the opportunity to join Patty, Victor, and I in Costa Rica with our plant medicine teachers that are shaman that have been doing this that they've done one of them's done thousands of ceremonies yeah, she's yeah. like she's like working her way to two yeah she's yeah, done yeah. Like, she, they're, they're amazing they are they're phenomenal yeah. legit shaman not just people that did it like a couple times and like no these people are um are really good at what they do they're amazing and i they, trust them with my life yes and, yeah. and patty patty the cool thing is patty's gonna be you're gonna be there as well assisting I get, yeah, I mean, that's, that's I think you're going to be, so Patty's yeah. gonna, so <laughs> I'll be there. What we want to invite you to is, do you know the exact dates? It's in, it's in November. I think, is it the 19th through the 22nd or the 18th through the 21st? It's one of those. It's either one of those two dates. Like mid to later November, it's, it's, right before Thanksgiving. It's right before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It is like four nights. Yes. Of plant, or okay, four nights uh, in Costa Rica. There's a place there called Nosara, which I've been to. I went to last year when I was in Costa Rica. I went to you know the the life transformation spa, and then from there I drove an hour and a half with when I was with Lior. We stayed in San Juanillo, close to Nosara. Nosara is this place that has magical energy. It is amazing. I, I can say this firsthand. We went there, and every time I went there, we went to the beach. It was amazing energy. We are going to be, we have a actual life transformation, like spa that we are renting out there. That's going to be completely for all of us and our subscribers, Patty, our two, um, master shaman and Victor and I 
are going to be there and we're going to be inviting you guys to come for two nights of Mother Ayahuasca ceremony. Mm -hmm. One day, on the third day, we're gonna be doing the option to do what's called San Pedro or Wachuma, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the entire world. Yes. <laughs> Wachuma is my favorite medicine ever. I told, I remember when you guys first told me about it. Um, I was like, no, I don't, I, I, Ayahuasca for me was like out of my comfort zone. I'm not yeah. doing San Pedro. I finally did it. It's something that's done during the day. It normally starts at eight or nine in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's a social group activity. It's not crazy psychedelic where you're like in a different dimension. It's more so like there, you're there with everybody else and you feel very connected and you get certain mm -hmm. insights, but you normally will do like social activities and stuff. Yeah, and we eating. do. There's a whole um, ceremony yes. that they do. Yeah, very yes. spiritual really, experience and without will, the, the effects as much. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's it's really is like the cherry on top for me. It's. It's one of my favorite things in the world, and um, it's better in ceremony. Like, yeah. uh, we, we've done it before where it's just like us and stuff, and when we are in a big group of people, it is it's better. It just, there's mm -hmm. something magic about it, especially with the shaman there. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be two nights of ayahuasca, the then a day of um, San Pedro, which starts at like eight in the morning till like, you know, I don't know what time at night, yeah. but Victor and I and um, Patty are all gonna be there leading it. They're, um, the, the, we're going to be there doing a workshop on each. I'm going to do a workshop one day. Victor's going to do a workshop on one day. Um, the plant medicine will be ayahuasca at night, the next day ayahuasca at night, and then San Pedro during the day. Victor and I will also be there for the San Pedro day. We're undecided. Patty's trying to get us to go to the, the ayahuasca <laughs> At nights. least one night. At we'll least see. One yeah, night. that's a possibility. Yeah. But regardless, uh, we want to attract people that want to come, that not just want to meet Victor or Patty and I, but people that really want and feel a calling to the medicine. Yes. So if you feel a calling to the medicine and you want the confidence of going somewhere where we're telling you these are master shaman that know what they're doing, you can feel safe, you can go to right now AaronDowdy.com, so A-A-R-O-N-D-O-U-G-H-T-Y.com slash Aya, A-Y-A, and that will take you to the sales page where you can see uh, the opportunity to join mm -hmm. and all the details and, and stuff. all the details with the dates and everything and you can decide and here's the thing um there's only 20 people and we know that this is going to book up probably within the first like you know we're yeah. going to put this out soon it'll book up extremely fast we know that um and if you ever felt a calling to plant medicine then we're going to be taking 10 people from my audience 10 people from victor's audience and we're all you're going to be with like-minded people you're going to be able to hang out with patty victor and i you're going to be able to do wachuma with all three of us for sure mm -hmm. and then possibly you know when we're in aya it, to specify this as well we're in our own world so it's yeah. not like you know victor and i are going to like pump up and do a music like a, a video for you guys yeah. and no. give you advice or anything yeah. but um, we'll be doing workshops, our own workshops each day. Um, it's going to be amazing. And the so, place is just gorgeous. It is it's amazing. a very luxurious oh, resort. Link, it's see, amazing. Yeah. I sent it. I sent it to um, sent it to Lior to see. She may be there too. We're, we're not sure yet, but she might make a little pop in or something. But I sent the pictures to her yesterday. And she's like, "Oh my god, I can't wait!" Aww. You know. <laughs> so if you want the opportunity to do ayahuasca and San Pedro. Meet like-minded people, hang out with Patty, Victor, and I, and go through workshops of a transformational process for four nights, five days. Is that what it is? Four nights, five days? Or Yep. Yeah. I think four so. nights, five days. Then go right now to AaronDowdy.com slash AYA for Aya, AYA, and you can apply there. Um, where there's only 10 people from my audience going, 10 people from Victor's audience going, and uh, we're super excited. We're super stoked. We are is there anything stoked. else I'm, I'm leaving out about it? Um, I bought the retreat itself. I don't think so. But one thing I did want to add is that, um, with, with, uh, San Pedro, it's a really beautiful medicine to work with, with ayahuasca as well, because oh, yeah. it really helps not just, um, because it's a beautiful medicine and you do your own healing work with that medicine, but it also helps you to integrate the ayahuasca ceremonies. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have like the, the heaviness and like the intensity of the ayahuasca. Sometimes it's not always heavy, but it's always intense. Yeah. I guess not, not always, not always, not yeah. always intense, but it can <laughs> be heavy and it can be intense. And when you have the two ayahuasca, it's really beautiful to cap off the, the ceremony weekend with the oh, San yeah. Pedro um, uh, ceremony because he brings things back into light and, yep. and um, like the puzzle pieces fall together yes. and it's like, ah, oh. yeah. 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 And he's a really beautiful heart medicine, heart opener. Oh, it's medicine. a heart opener for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, I feel it's like really... in past lives, I may have said this on one of my prior episodes, but in past <laughs> lives, I feel a very connection to the Toltecs 
And I found out that the Toltecs uh, and the Mayans, I don't know if the first of the Mayans, maybe the Mayans too, but the Toltecs worked with Wachuma. Or they worked Sa- with San Pedro? That's what I heard. And okay. it, it really resonated Not with Not peyote? Me. Maybe it was peyote. But the peyote and uh, Wachuma uh, or Similar. San Pedro, Similar. Yeah. they're cousins. Yes, basically. exactly. Yeah. So they, they work in the same sort of field. Peyote has um, a few more alkaloids than Wachuma does, mm-hmm. but um, they're cousins. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Similar me- mescaline is like, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, plant medicine has been something. Every one of us, is, our lives have been transformed from doing plant medicine. For and sure. More specifically, ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else you guys want to add? And then I, I want to... Um, yeah, I, I think you said everything. It's what you said is uh, I'd say an accurate description. I'd say go to the link that Aaron said because yeah. I, I help make the website and it just gives you all like the little the the nuts and bolts, the details mm-hmm. that yeah. you're details looking for, the, the date, exactly what you can expect, um, that There's kind of thing. There's a shuttle that's going to pick them up from Liberia yep. Airport. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Like it literally, all, it's you, like an all-inclusive you, sort you of experience. For, you pay the price. And it's cheaper than many other places you would go as well. We'll tell mm-hmm. you that right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you pay that price and it's like you don't have to really, you don't have to deal with anything. The food is paid for. Mm-hmm. The shuttle is paid for. You're going to be around other people. Imagine being around other people that are also into the same type of information. It's really cool. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. you, you will meet one of like your soul family friends or, you know, I know, yeah. I yeah. believe that. Like, this is something that we see all the time because Patty is actually going to be, uh, we're going to have people, inter- you have to kind of interview to, to, get yeah. accepted so we make sure we have the right people but we do retreat sometimes in this fashion and it's always the right people are synchronistically led to it and end up coming yeah. so mm-hmm. it's so f- common that people will literally meet for the first time someone in their soul family yeah. it's, it's sort of abstract as it sounds it's yeah. no bullshit it, yeah. you yeah. Well, I've lifelong it. I've friendships are formed yeah you know people that have been to, i know people that have been to their retreats yeah, then, you yeah. Know, and it's not even yeah. because we're special just the way it works it's just the way the it's retreat yeah. experience yeah. it's a high vibe choice yeah. to make <laughs> um, so you guys can go to AaronDowdy.com slash Aya. You can apply there to be a part of the um, the November retreat that we have going on. We're super excited for it. Yeah. Yes. Where else can people uh, find you guys? And, you know, if they want more <laughs> of both of you. Yeah. So we, uh, we also have a podcast we do together. We call it the Awakened Life Podcast. Yep. So you can just type in that for our podcast. So on iTunes or Spotify. Yep, both. Awaken Life yep. Podcast. And that's both you and Patty, uh-huh. both of you guys. Yep. Yeah. And you guys do episodes, I think, every week. Once so a week, roughly. We yeah. kind of do it on the... Beautiful. F- yeah. yeah. Awesome. Anything yeah. else you guys want to... Um, yeah, you guys know they're my best friends and stuff, so um, I can't talk them up enough, but they're uh, definitely go check out their podcast. Go check out whatever they're they're up to. Um, and we're just... We're super excited. Yeah. We've got a lot we of cool are. stuff coming. November is going to be an exciting month. Um, yes. You get some people, I imagine as well, that may go. They may end up staying a little bit longer in Costa Rica. I know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. You, It'd you be a good idea go if you can. Go for four days and then go. You know. Yeah. Make a whole like. It's a beautiful of it. place. Yeah. 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 You could go either before or after. May meet people yeah. there, and then you guys can decide to stay. Yeah. You know, yeah. Four yeah. or five days longer, mm-hmm. and it's being amazing. Costa Rica is very magical, and especially it in Osara, You know. And that time of year is just the weather's am- just perfect, is perfect, man. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. funny. By the first or second, the one thing I always remember is by the first or second night of ceremony, or that pe- that people come in. There's a certain like there's certain energy. Our walls. Are getting, we have mm-hmm. all these walls up, right? But by the third or fourth night, by the second night of ceremony, or I'd say yeah. But even I'd by say the first after night, the first night, a lot of oh, people man. left. You're hugging and crying yeah. together, and it's like it's this, beautiful. This, this is, you feel so. You're like, what was I worried about back in the states, or like, yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. amazing yeah. the kind of insights. When so. you when you drink medicine with people you connect on a completely other level yeah and it's really beautiful to, and you can really to be a part of yeah sorry you can really like where we're going to be taking you or whoever comes it's like a place you can really just let go yeah. of all the stresses of your day the stresses of your your life yeah. and just work on yourself and and it's like yeah. you're actually you actually feel comfortable letting go that's what Aaron I think was sort of referring yes. to after a day or two you just it's like you've been carrying these bags your whole oh, life and man. you just let them go it and it, it feels so liberating yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're excited to hopefully share that experience with you guys. Um, whoever uh, wants to join, you can apply, like we said. Other than that, thank you guys so much for coming yeah, on. Thank you for, for having, having us on. We had of a good course. time, man. I love it. We're going to do this more often. Yeah. As we get the house in Sedona, too, and I set up the podcast studio, we'll definitely be doing yeah. more and stuff. I'm excited yeah. to have this new equipment, to have you guys here. And it's yeah, fun. It's yeah. Fun. Other than that, we will talk to you guys later. And as always, peace, much love, and namaste. namaste. Peace. <laughs>